Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Vintage Barb for two drink minimum. You can see I've got a rosé in my glass like I usually do in the summer months. Cheers. But really what I wanted to talk to you about today is some of the fun kitchen creations I've made just sort of experimenting um, in the last couple of months. So I'm just going to share a few homemade vintage kitchen creations. And look, I'm not great at baking because I don't like precise measurements. I like a little of this, a little of that, some salt, some pepper, some sugar, whatever, right? But I've had a lot of success with homemade dog treats, um, with some cool boozy popcorn, and of course with great wine and spirits cocktails. So just a couple ideas for you in case you're bored in the kitchen in the middle of summer like I've been. Um, first of all, I picked up a couple of these cute dog-themed mats on Amazon, and the color coordination is not deliberate. Um, but I have one that looks like this and one that's uh, dog bone shaped. And Layla and Duncan love these. Um, I use them for frozen treats as well as uh, baked in the oven. And it's basically just experimenting. Um, the frozen ones are a little yogurt, peanut butter, canned pumpkin. Um, you can throw a banana in there and just throw them in this mat and put it in the freezer. And a few hours later, you've got delicious, homemade, crunchy treats, and the dogs love those. But these work in the oven too, and you'll find a lot of recipes online, so I'm not going to bother you with another one. But basically throw some oats in a food processor, grind them up, put a bunch of ingredients that dogs like in there, and bake it at about 325 for maybe 15 minutes. Um, these things, when baked, don't have a very long shelf life because there's no preservatives, right? So, um, you know, make a few, like I make half a mat at a time for the dogs and it's enough for three or four days and then make a new batch. Forget buying treats at the dog store anymore. It's cheaper, they're natural, so healthier and um, you're gonna be a dog hero like I am. And then a girl comes along. Speaking of being a hero, I made my first attempt today ever which is a big surprise at homemade fried chicken. Can you guys see how delicious? Delicious. I don't know. I wish you could smell it. Um, this is a weird recipe I found online via a college friend named Mike on Facebook who found Snoop Dogg's fried chicken recipe. <laughs> And in discussing with my Jeff that I've never attempted fried chicken, I went for it today. I actually used boneless, skinless chicken thighs because that's what I had. Um, I brined them first overnight and it's like flour and cornmeal, some baking powder, salt, garlic powder, cayenne, and the piece de resistance, the je ne sais quoi, if you will, is some mashed up potato chips. That's courtesy of Snoop Dogg, and if it was 420, you'd want these fried chicken tenders too. They were amazing. I oversalted them a little bit the first time, but I won't make that mistake again. They're going to be great tomorrow when I coat them in a little wing sauce and put them in the air fryer. The flight meets back on the menu, boys! So, way to go me. First attempt at fried chicken. Um, I have a deep fryer. It was at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and I cooked those for about 10 minutes. But you can do it in a Dutch oven. Um, I used canola oil. I love to just wing it in the kitchen, and you guys can too. It doesn't have to be hard. Okay, so we've got treats for Jeffs, we've got treats for dogs. Of course, there's treats for vintage Barb. So this is um, my favorite summer cocktail. And I know I've talked about this before. I've written about it on my blog. As you can see, this is mint infused rosé. And the one I have here is Hess Select from California. 
I do believe this is Pinot Noir from Central Coast, and I thought it was fine on its own. Um, a little nondescript and not a ton of character, but it was okay for sipping. So threw some fresh mint sprigs in there, put it in the fridge overnight, and what I'll do is use it for like sangria. Um, you can use apricot brandy. You can use triple sec. You could use regular brandy, um, any of those things to fortify it. Like plantation makes an awesome pineapple rum. <laughs> really good to mix in there. And then it's just about like your fizzy mixers. And I love stuff like this. Again, I've talked about these kinds of things before. This is just our local grocery store, Jewel Osco's house brand. This is their French style sparkling lime aid. Lemonade works. Um, but any brand of these sparkling lemon or lime aids uh, to just throw into sangria or any cocktail, it really brings a lot of acid and a little bit of sugar and all those fun buzzle, fun buzzles. It brings fun bubbles to the table. Another mixer secret I want to share with you guys is this thing. Okay, um, this brand is called Top Hat, and it's a ginger beer syrup, which I use with my soda stream, okay? So I just make sparkling water, uh, throw some of this in there to taste. I'm not gonna tell you what my measurement is because I don't measure it. I just put enough so that it tastes good. I buy this on Amazon. Top Hat has not provided me with samples, but if they wanted to give me some of their ginger beer mix for life, I would use it for my Moscow Mules and um, Dark and Stormies, which is rum and ginger beer, or my favorite summer whiskey cocktail that I've talked about before. That's Buffalo Trace bourbon, kiddos, with some ginger beer and some sweet tea. Listen, there's a lot going on in the Vintage Barb kitchen, and I need a lot of experiments. I need a lot of things to keep my mind occupied. Um, we're all a little bit, like, under valued or whatever. I'm just going to edit this thing, hopefully. So... In the industry, we call them cigarette buttons. We're all a little underutilized these days. Maybe there's a lack of creativity. You're probably doing a lot of takeout and a lot of frozen meals like I am. So no judgment here, but try to find something that sparks your curiosity and your creativity. The last thing I'm going to share with you guys, this is super secret just coming up on the Vintage Barb Radar. This is my new experiment. Um, it looks like just regular popcorn, probably, to you, but I've been doing some fun things with booze-infused caramel sauces and other syrups. Um, this one I've created into old-fashioned flavored popcorn. So I made a bourbon reduction and mixed it with a little orange simple syrup, baked it up. And the next step is I'm going to throw I'm going to throw some dehydrated orange slices in there. I've also got like banana nut rum popcorn. I made amaretto poppycock. Um, and I have a lot of other ideas for boozy popcorn. You guys should stay tuned because I think we're going to have some vintage pop coming at you pretty soon. Maybe you can buy it online on an Etsy shop. I'll let you know. But until then, woo, it's good. It's boozy, you guys. It tastes like bourbon and orange if you like old fashions, if you like bourbon cocktails. It's so good. Luckily, there's only like 20-some subscribers, so 
I don't think it's gonna get out too quickly. <laughs> Anywho, um, that's just a recap of the last few weeks in the vintage Barb kitchen, the dog treats, um, the fried chicken, cocktails with mixers, like uh, doing a lot of drinking of rosé, both just out of the glass in its purest form, as well as making mint-infused rosé sangria. These will also turn out to be really good, albeit not completely solid, ice cubes. And coming up on the next episode, I hope to share some more of this boozy, boozy popcorn with you. Stay tuned. Until then, I'm pretty tipsy. I'm so drunk, I can barely see. I hope you are too. I'll see you next time on Two Drink Minimum. Cheers. <laughs>